Hi. You doing okay? <laughs> okay. Uh, we try to start with wine to get everybody a little bit, you know, more relaxed for the occasion. So we want to make sure you're going to have a good time this afternoon. Uh, I'm Mabel Tang. I'm the executive director of the Chinese Culture Center. Um, so first of all, I'd like to welcome you to our very, very first um, dialogue on public space, arts, and community building. Um, this panel kind of signal a new beginning for the Chinese Culture Center uh, in collaborating with the community to discuss how are we going to maximize the potential of arts in the community. So if you look around the room right now, you see how diverse the, uh, the attendees are. And I want to thank you for being here uh, with us. So give yourself a round of applause. We have with us, um, of course, the artists. We are very proud of their accomplishment, and we are very, very honored to be collaborating with them. So uh, give yourself a round of applause. <laughs> no, I mean, really, Chinese Culture Center is extremely proud. It's extremely proud of our present tense by Andrew series. And this is, um, I've always called Abby's baby, so Abby, please stand up and let everybody know who you are. <laughs> and uh, Ashley, the person who put a lot of time and thoughts into this, is Alan O from Kearney Street Workshop, working with uh, Alan. <laughs> and the person who curated this show, I know Kevin is here. Oh, yeah, Kevin, stand up. I guess we do a little bit kind of Chinese style, right? So if you've ever been to a Chinese banquet, the whole room will be introduced by, by the end of the event. Um, that's how we make sure everybody feels particip you know, participation and feel part of the family. And we really look at this as part of the Chinese culture uh, center's family. Um, we have funders here, we have community partners here, we have the art community here, and we thank you for making this dialogue a success. Um, as I mentioned, present tense is really um, a program that signals a new beginning for the work of the Chinese Culture Center. And with this, uh, we are working very hard to become a, a residential hub, a community and a destination where people can connect to and where people can explore and envision progressive Chinese American and Chinese culture and heritage. Um, we are very, very proud of the exhibition and the outcome so far. Um, anyone want to take a rough guess on how many visitors have looked at the wonderful, beautiful uh, artistic creation of these artists here? I'll take one guess. Nobody want to guess? Oh, yeah, close, <laughs> close, um, about 97,000 show, but we're getting there. This is the very first one and we are going to work harder to get to 100,000. So when we celebrate 100,000, we want to make sure you are back here. Um, over 3,000 people have come so far and this is like a really, really successful uh, attendance. Um, you know, for a group of young and budding, you know, budding artists who's going to be famous in a couple of years. Um, and we have uh, given tours to 50, 50 uh, school groups have uh, looked at your artwork. And they are very inspired. They all want to be artists. And that's what we want to do. We want to be a presenter. We want to be a connector. And we also want to be an incubator. Um, so today, just a couple of things. Um, I want to introduce Mar Martin from the Doi Hua Foundation. Are you here yet? Okay, so I guess this is really like a Chinese wedding where everybody's going to be a little bit late. Uh, Julie from the Arts Commission. Please stand up. Yvette with the Chinese Tibetan Friendship Association. Is Anne here from the Meridian Gallery? Rachel. 
Um, and I know Vanessa is, will be here from the San Francisco Foundation. Um, and from the Wilders Foundation, and of course our community partner, Ten Chow from CCDC. <laughs> Alwyn from the Econ uh, Tenderloin Economic Council. Thank you for Peter Swin from Asian Law Caucus. Well, he'll be here. And uh, Meg from the San Francisco Arts Commission Gallery. Okay, here. Um, San Francisco State University will be here. So, um, so in kind of being very proud of the exhibition, um, these wonderful creations, this is a placemat uh, designed by Ayman and Hello designed by Ayman. All the exhibition related uh, product will be at 10% off today. So please buy your lucky feet or good or well, whatever, happy foot <laughs> t-shirt. <laughs> That's Ken's design. And the San Francisco Normal University. This is the university you are currently attending, right here, designed by Justin. Um, and if you haven't left your business card when you came in, or if you haven't filled out this card, it's our way to get you to give us your email so we can contact and we'll have the grand raffle drawing, lucky drawing, at the end, and this is the wonderful, wonderful prize, which we are not gonna share with you right now. Okay, so if you give us this card, um, at the end of the event, we'll do the drawing, and um, well, we'll have a happy soul. Um, so without further ado, I'm going to ask Abby to come up here to introduce our esteemed moderator, who will then introduce the wonderful artist uh, to lead us in this dialogue today. So Abby. Um, just a very quick introduction about Darren uh, Owen. He's from the Community Education Services. And it's, um, they have been in around for um, half decades or even longer. 40, yeah. And um, when we're talking about contemporary art, and particularly putting the art in the community and public space, um, it, it's very important for us to continue to engage the younger generation to join the dialogue, to appreciate art, and also use art to inspire and influence other people around them. And Dar Darren is right in the heart of doing that. Um, they have worked with so many schools, and not just only in Chinatown, but also beyond Chinatown, and we're hoping to work with them more in the future about our exhibition outreach program. And with that, I'm not sure if Alan is going to introduce the panelists, or Darren. Okay. It's fine for Darren today. I just wanted to say thank you for everybody to come, for coming today, and um, it's been such a pleasure to work with the Chinese Culture Center and all of the amazing artists in the show. And please, um, don't Hold your questions till the end. Feel free to raise your hand and join in the discussion at any time. Yeah, we sort of made the seating kind of uh, round shape because uh, ideally I would like to get rid of the chairs that we all kind of sit like, you know, the commune style. <laughs> but, <laughs> right, right. So, but yeah, feel free to speak up. There we go. <clears throat> okay, everybody, thanks. Thanks for coming today. <laughs> Um, so I'm pretty excited to be here, but before we get into it, um, I want to tell you two things. That A, I've never moderated, no, I'm okay, I think it's not that big of a room. Um, I've never moderated anything before, and I don't know anything about contemporary art. So whatever your expectations are right now, the word, go down a couple steps, okay, when you get there, you go down two more steps, and then I think we'll be okay. So. Um, so anyway, I'm really excited because, uh, as uh, Abby said, I've been working here in Chinatown with children and youth for uh, more than two decades. During those two decades, I've visited the gallery a couple times, a few times over the years. And over the years, I've always kind of found, I mean, hey, I'm proud of my culture, I'm proud of Chinese history, but come down to the gallery, you know, you see some more of those paintings of big funny looking mountains and little pagodas and houses. Oh, and more bamboo and stuff like that. Whatever. I mean, you know, I love this stuff, really, but, you know, I got a couple books at home. I'll just 
when I need to look at that stuff, when I need to get my Chinese culture fix, I'll just open my book and feel proud of you. Um, but, <laughs> so I was really, uh, really amazed, really excited. Uh, the, the last, uh, what was it, not too long ago, uh, when they had, what was the name of the exhibit? Lord, 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 yeah. That, that red thing. I don't know if any of you saw that. <laughs> that red dangly thing that kind of went like this and, and all that. And uh, I, was, I was pretty stunned. I was like, wait, there's not some difference going on. And I brought all my family, and I brought my cousins, brought a whole bunch of tried to get other uh, community directors here and everything. And uh, I, I really liked that. And then, but then, and, I, and everyone, you know, that was a very beautiful piece, right? And anyone, whether they like contemporary art, could go there and go, wow, this is beautiful. And, and whether or not they got anything out of that story, who knows, but it was, it was really nice. Uh, then I came to this next exhibit. I said, what's going on here this time? Walk in the door, look down, and I see the first thing I see is, you know, uh, these mirror boxes, right? And this purple neon squiggly line on it. And okay, you guys, is that a I'm not sure if I love contemporary art, honestly. You know, so you, 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 like sometimes I see contemporary art and I get that, yeah, what? <laughs> and I just kinda look at it and not sure if my mind goes blank. And I, so I looked at it for a while and went, oh, okay. Okay, I'm here to see what's exciting and new, and I look down and I see, ooh, squiggly neon lights. Now, I don't know too much about contemporary art, but I thought, oh, well, neon. Well, wasn't that like maybe new when I was this tall? Or something that's just contemporary, you know? Okay, and, and you know, I've known Mabel for a while, and I was like, oh, Mabel, what's going on, what's going on here? Fortunately, I had the good fortune of running meeting Abby, and Abby explained to me, I need explanations of things, uh, that this squiggly neon light, which I wasn't sure how cutting edge it was. You know, you know when you think of cutting edge, I know when I saw it, I thought of the squiggly neon, neon light, I thought of those, maybe think of those little uh, practice scissors that kids use, you know, that, that really can't cut through anything. It's like squiggly neon. What's so anyway, Abby finally explained to me that the squiggly neon line, which I was kind of puzzled by, was a representation of the Yangtze River. And am I, did I get that right? Okay, good. <laughs> and then, and that this is the river that's just been dammed, correct? And, and then I, you know, I had a, a, a moment of, wow, it all started to make sense. Oh, this great river that was dammed for electricity, you know, a neon light, electricity running through it, uh, oh, okay, now I think I can believe you, sort of. But it started to make sense. I said, okay, all right, I'm back into the game. This is making sense. It started to make more sense to me. So that's why I'm here, because I'm really, I'm, I'm not sure if I understand it completely. I'm not sure if I'm getting it all. But I really like the fact that the Culture Center is doing this uh, new stuff that's kind of making my brain go to the edge of barely getting what's going on, but it's, it's fun, it's interesting. So, I'm supposed to introduce the artist. I just met them a few minutes ago, so of course I'm going to take the lazy way out. I'm going to ask them to introduce themselves. So why don't we just take one minute each and kind of talk about, you know, it's sort of a, you're, all of you, I think, are a good deal younger than me. My generation was sort of like, we were all supposed to be accountants or doctors. So, Okay. <laughs> in two minutes or less, each of you, or three or whatever, how on earth did you avoid becoming an accountant or doctor and become an artist? What is going on here? This is a huge violation of our culture and, and, and reason for being here on earth. Why did that happen? So why don't we start, let's start in the middle, start with Julie. <laughs> okay. Um... Yeah, let's put the hard pressure on the person who's already got enough. Things going on. Let's just do the microphone just in case. Yeah. Okay. Right, that's actually a really good question for me because I think at the um, one of the roots of my work even is about what it meant to uh, you know grow up in Orange County as a Chinese American woman, which implies having Chinese American parents or Chinese parents, excuse me, and a Chinese mother, and all the expectations that went along with that. And as, as you were alluding to, uh, uh, I could have been a doctor, an engineer, perhaps a lawyer, and then my mother decided I should be an international diplomat. So once she got that idea, 
Now, I think, you know, I think about it, I, I feel a little closer to that calling um, in terms of the way that um, I look at the capacity of what art can do, which is to um, think about cross-cultural ideas and um, how we make sense of it. And my particular interest is, you know, our identity and, and how we sort of navigate through these things that, um, you know, these pressures that you talk about or, um, these, you know, uh, external perceptions um, that we that we recognize that other other people or outsiders and other communities um, uh, might perceive of us. So um, to answer your question a little bit, about how did I do it? Um, a lot of kicking and screaming. There's a lot of crying involved. I think there was many months of not talking to them, but um, eventually I think that um, you know I actually was a teacher. At and I think the, the, the lesson I most like to uh, pass on to the younger generation, um, artists or not, is that if you have a calling, you could try to deny it all you want for as long as you want. You're just sort of prolonging the pain and the inevitable. But as soon as you just recognize what it is you need to do, um, we can all get along better and things can get done a lot more quickly. <laughs> She still wants to, me to be a doctor. Like, and I should preface that today is my birthday and I'm doing a panel discussion. And my, and my mother was still like, you know, the dentistry school at UCSF is like super amazing. And you should consider using your hands for drilling teeth. So, um, but my, my advice would be to uh, find, a way, find a way to pay for it. I never ask them for any money and there's nothing they can do because I'm more independent than all my other cousins that have $100,000 a year jobs. So I, I maintain that's the number one thing. Um, and I also think it's ironic because she's always asking me, she, she always thinks that her daughter turned out to be the most American, the least Chinese daughter she had. But um, then she probably shouldn't have put me in Chinese school when I was five and signed me up for those calligraphy classes and the paper cutting classes. And, got me all addicted to cutting things over and over and over again. Um, and the, the, I think the irony of all of it is I think I've, I've been more vocal and done more of a, given more of myself and made more of an impact in redefining what being Chinese and being Chinese American is than all my engineer and investment bankers and doctor cousins could ever uh, do. So I think it worked, but she's hard one. My name is Justin Hoover. Uh, I think the best way to answer this question would be to turn it around and ask my family, who is right there. So Will and Anna and Tamara would please stand up. And so I can ask you. I shall come out, this will be fun. So now. Okay, wonderful. Why is it I didn't become an accountant? As much as your mother wished. 
into the building with her. Thank you. Yeah, as much as your mother wished that you had had. Wasn't she going to send you to business school? <laughs> That's true. Well, you did get one uh, degree. You got your master's in international policy, which was kind of the direction that your mother wanted you to go. But I recall you, you asking me once, once you got that degree, you said you would um, consider uh, working for a year or two and then maybe going for an MFA. And the advice I gave you is, if you really want the MFA, you better do it now. Because if you wait a couple of years, you'll never, you'll never do it, and you'll, you'll regret it. So. OK, I guess my mother has nothing to say on that topic. Anna? <laughs> well, just to make it very simple, I woke up this morning at 6 o'clock, and I was actually um, Googling. I was finding all of these wonderful museums, and I thought, well, you know, what if he's going to be an artist, or, or should he be the director, you know, of, uh, <laughs> of the museum? Yeah, okay, thank you. No, but anyway, so. I'm, I'm no Chinese well. mothers are always the same. <laughs> All right, so here's, I guess, the issue. Um, I guess when I was in school, my teacher once asked me, like, uh, why are you here, too? You know, why are you in school? And I, I didn't really have an answer. And one of the, so she had multiple choice. You know, one of the questions was, uh, you can't do anything else. You know, and it doesn't mean you're unable or incapable of doing other things. I'm not going to drill teeth, too, probably. You don't want to, but. Uh, there's like a drive that you just need to fulfill, so that's why I make art. And uh, that's the other thing. A lot of times, what I do, I don't even know if it's art or not. I'm just following some ideas, and uh, for some reason, they have a manifestation in something physical or you know um, some sort of situation. And it's just about speaking the language and framing it right, and um, knowing how to take what you do and what you think and frame it. Not physically put in a frame, but you know, build context around it that can investigate certain issues or questions. So that's why I'm here. Great, thanks very much for that. And we'll do some more introductions. But just to be clear, uh, Ken did the display art, the window art. Uh, I just call it the basketball window or the tennis shoe window. Um, Julie did the art down at the window of the Asian Law Caucus, which you called. Final application something something or other, right? Um, Iman, did I get that right? Yes, yes. Iman, you're doing the the uh, window that's just on the next block with the sort of the, the objects that are wrapped in that uh, kind of greenish paper that you often see in sort of import items from China. Oh, thank you. And Justin, you would have to go to the gallery, and Justin has a video uh, which is demonstrates the. Uh, extremely important work of the San Francisco Normal University English class. It's also on Clay Street. Oh, it's also on Clay Street, wow. At the okay, perfect. So everywhere, great. And now two more people I want to introduce are Vivian and Elvin. Vivian is from the Chinatown Community Development Center, and Elvin is from the Tenderloin Economic Development Center. Okay, that was easy. All right, <laughs> so why don't you, you know, it's kind of, it's sort of the same question can apply to you as well, which is, you know, it's not, uh, I know from, from my standpoint as well, you know, it's not often that parents dream about their kids becoming community workers. So, how, how did you guys wind up with this? And why did you Hello. Hi, I'm Vivian Chang, and I'm an urban planner with the Chinatown Community Development Center, and I've been working there for the past year or so. And um, this little background, I, uh, my, my mother wanted me to become a nurse, and she tried really hard to me to go down some path like that, but I ended up doing environmental planning, um, and now I'm in um, economic development um, and transportation planning for the Chinatown community, and I can just say that it's been it's been a long um, journey, but I'm just really glad that my parents are really um, excited that, about the work that I do because it does impact um, our our Chinese community, and it's been really encouraging to involve them in some of the work I do. Um, like uh, in April, we had a first Arts in the Alley um, community festival, and my whole family was involved. Um, my dad did some calligraphy, and uh, my brother and my mom got up really early that day and helped set up chairs and tables. Um, but it's just been really great to see how Chinatown is establishing itself um, in the 
sense that um, we are showcasing local artists who are very talented and that um, it gives them a platform to display their um, ingenuity and their um, creative talents. And I just hope that this type of work continues to empower and to establish Chinatown as a cultural mecca um, so that other people can be drawn to our neighborhood um, to appreciate and to learn about our history, our culture, um, and as well as spending money at our local uh, stores. Hello, everyone. First, uh, thank you for the invitation to join the wonderful panel on this great event today. My name is Elvin. I'm the executive director of the Tendamoy Economic Development Project. I'm a bit of a oddball uh, in terms of uh, the panel. Uh, I'm from Puerto Rican ancestry, and I'm also, uh, uh, despite my appearance, I'm a pretty old guy. I think I have more gray hairs than you do, so <laughs> even though you said you were the oldest one, I think I might, I might have you on that. Um, my work currently, what I've been doing for, for many years now, is community development work, and I work with a number of communities, different cities throughout the United States, uh, trying to find ways to facilitate community development where everyone comes along for the ride. Some foundations like to call it equitable community development. And one of the ways that I've been working on doing that, accomplishing that, is utilizing the arts to improve neighborhoods and improve communities. That's my area of focus right now in the Tenderloin, and, and as, as our conversation continues today, I'll be happy to share my experience with you. Thank you. Thanks. Okay, well, I have a whole bunch of questions prepared, but before I start in, um, just let me check. Anybody have any questions yet that you want to ask any of the artists or any of the people up here? Anything yet? Okay. Uh, well, I had, a, I had one question for Hyman. Um, hello, Hyman. Surprise. Um, you guys are going to really enjoy it today. <laughs> um, you know, you talked about having an impact uh, on the, that your project has sort of impact uh, on the community uh, by, uh, through, and can you talk about what that has felt like? Like a phrase I've heard before, sometimes we talk about the community work as well. This idea of sometimes leaving the community to serve the community, being, like you said, almost like uh, not, um, in a sense, uh, following a different set of expectations, a different calling, and yet that seems in many ways very different than what the expectations were, and yet still being very uh, involved in trying to um, to promote or serve the community. Can you talk a little bit more about what that's felt like? Culture has always played a part in um, 
elevating an idea about a group of people. And the History of Chinatown has been doing that for 100 some years through its shops and its programmings and its parades. And all of this stuff is uh, commodity stuff is helping to sculpt what people think of Chinese people. Um, and Chinatown played this huge role in it. And as artists subversively being in this place and giving them something other than all those sort of uh, tchotchke shops on their way here, I think is, is a really important, um, a really important thing that we're doing because tourists are coming in with an idea and right there through every shop window is another idea. Um, I don't know if I answered the question, but I think I want to bring it back to just the, the core, the, what was so exciting about this, this show and all the institutions that have organized it and why I think it's, it's an important thing that's happening this summer. Great, thanks. No, I actually really appreciate what you, because I was trying to understand her art too. Like I said, I'm not, uh, I don't do this stuff very often, and, and I was trying to understand, well, well, what is the meaning of wrapping all sorts of objects? And so I really, I picked up a little bit on what you said, something about these commodities shaping what people think of, of our community. So that helped, helped me understand a little bit, a bit more about what you're, what you're saying there. Um, how about going to, um, Julie, uh, you were talking about the um, so the, the cross-cultural ideas helping uh, the, the external perceptions that people have of a community. So I think that this, that's a really interesting concept. So here we are in Chinatown. And it seems to me that your art is aimed toward people outside of Chinatown and how they perceive. Chinese culture. So can you talk about that juxtaposition? Or, or let me put it bluntly, why not have your art, uh, not that, you know, if we could get it down at the B of A Center or in some other place outside of China. Here we are in Chinatown, and you're trying to talk, negotiate, negotiate I think the word you were using is negotiating external perception. So why are we doing this in Chinatown? I think that, that's one of the reasons why I was, uh, I'm actually at first a little um, cautious maybe about this project because uh, I really, in a way, have been an outsider commenting, uh, commenting on these things that have been um, aggravating to me or frustrating to me. Um, and I never really thought of myself as an insider of the Chinese culture. And so um, to actually put myself in the very center of the thing that uh, is sort of a the greatest manifestation of, of the, the ideas that have I struggled against um, growing up in, in, in my journey towards trying to make sense of, of who I am. Um, there was a, definitely a tension there. Uh, and in the end, it was a it's coming home and coming full circle. Um, very much um, in the way that, um, you know, when I first started this body of work, I, I drew from this idea of the commodification of culture, and where else do you find those perfect, iconic um, representations of Chinese culture than in Chinatown? And, and if you think about it, um, as, as you were saying, as you're walking down um, Grant Street, those shops aren't marketing things that real Chinese people use. They're things that are created to, um, they're, they're created because as Chinese people, we think that's what Westerners want from us, right? And and in that way, I think that's, that existence of this uh, conflation, and we don't, no longer know what is, is real, what's a true representation, what is a, a response, um, and and that's where it gets interesting. And I think, of, I think to answer your question, to bring it back to that, um, to place these patterns that I've created and, and manipulated over years, and, and, and there's definitely an integration of my personal history as well as these um, you know, very external representations of East and West, to actually have that back at, in Chinatown, um, at the Asian law, you know, law caucus window front, um, it, it is a, it's a surprising place for it to be, and I think it still remains to be seen exactly what it means. I think these are the kinds of reasons why projects like this now Forces outside of where we normally show work or where we're normally comfortable. Um, it's really good for the artists too because we're learning also in, in those in these challenges. Thanks. And then if I could continue a question with you, with you, 
Um, I don't know how many of you got to see her art down at the Asian Law Caucus. And um, some of the work, you know, there's like, it's a lot of, uh, uh, there's, um, I'm not sure how to say it, but anyway, it's, uh, yeah, anyway, there's a silhouette there. There's a silhouette of a woman yeah. in, okay. in, in, in high heels. And when you said commodification, you said commodification culture. And I, and I saw that image. And to me, that kind of think, makes me think of the commodification of women. And so anyway, talk, talk about that image. Okay. I, I have to say, I looked at it and I'm like, hmm, wonder what she's up to with that. Okay, so um, one of the, the themes that you're gonna, you'll continue to hear me talk about are these stereotypes. Um, one of them being uh, this idea of the exoticization of the Asian woman. So are we intended to be good daughters? Are we intended to be male order brides? Um, those silhouettes were actually taken from uh, Reagan Louie's photographic series um, that he did for the SF MoMA um, few years ago now that I was really impacted by because they embody that tension between what is grotesque and what is beautiful um, simultaneously. Um, and that, I think that is an aesthetic that I have uh, continued to be drawn to. So um, those are uh, silhouettes of some prostitutes that he took uh, when he did a, a series of, of photographs documenting the Asian sex industry. Um, and, um, and so those, those girls, those dancers um, do come up um, in, in my work. So for those of you who haven't seen it and might not know my work, I, um, I look at, um, I use turn of the century uh, pattern work um, as a way to sort of set this formal, uh, this format, visual format to talk about things um, that are a little bit more social or personal. So I take uh, images that are uh, familiar and even sexy in, in a design sense, but then we'll hide things that don't belong there. So that's why, um, as you look at this pattern that may seem like, oh, I might have seen that on um, some bed sheets at Macy's, um, you may not have expected the, the prostitute hanging out as well. Thank you. And uh, Justin, um, so if I can move it on to uh, Justin, we'll come back to all these different issues. That's really interesting, thanks. Um, just that, you know, I've uh, enjoyed your video, and could you explain what this is coming from? I, I know when I see it, I, I get the sense that you are, uh, I mean, I, I, I have to say when I've seen it, I have, I have felt amused. That's not necessarily a really deep uh, emotion or feeling, but I, I have felt some amusement over at, at, at your video. I've thought about, huh, that looks like some of these videos I've seen in Chinatown. So just talk about what you were, and, and, I, and, I, and I hear what you said earlier, that sometimes you create things, you're not even sure if it's art, you're just moved to create something. Now that's been created, it's been up there, you've had some time to think about it. Uh, I know sometimes the process of creating art, you're just kind of creating it. What, what meaning have you found in it so far? Can you talk about why at all it came to you to, to, to do that video? Mm -hmm. right, thank you. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, well, okay, yeah, you do see those videos a lot in Chinatown. And I guess I was just, I was walking down the street one day in Chinatown, and 